Everybody, it's Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Brad. Hello. Hi. Good morning, Christian. How are you doing? I'm doing well. And for folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? What do I do? That is a good question. My name is Brad Prendergast. I'm currently located in Florida. I recently moved here from New Hampshire. I went from the cold to the extreme cold to the extreme heat, I guess you could say. Can't escape that heat. Yeah. I don't, I don't uh, know how you people do that because you can bundle up against cold, but you can't escape the heat. But as my daughter told me at one point, and I think she said it best, you shouldn't live where the air hurts your face. And that that's a good creed. Yes. <laughs> so it's interesting. Um, again, my name is Brad Prendergast, as I had mentioned. I now reside in Florida, and I primarily work with uh, Business Central, ERP. Uh, the ERP software, uh, working with companies, helping them implement and design and customize or extend their solutions. Uh, I've been working with uh, within Business Central, as its name now is formerly Navision, back when it first came to the United States back in 1998. Uh, and over the course of that time, I've stuck with the application. Uh, I've worked for both partners implementing for customers, and I've also managed internal systems a- as an end user, which gives me a, an interesting perspective of understanding what it takes from both sides of how to successfully implement an ERP implementation. Yeah, how is it being in the Microsoft space in the ERP world? Because my experience in having come from uh, supply chain collaboration technology companies into the Microsoft ecosystem, it was a few years back, but working in the space, there were very few like Microsoft technologists that I worked with. Like we had like the office productivity stuff, but Usually people that are work in that space come from other down other technology paths. It's I enjoy it. And I think that it is a, a great space to be in the business central community as we work with the is partners working with the implementations. It's it's a small community. It feels small community. I mean, there's a number of people that do it worldwide. Uh, you know, Microsoft doesn't do the implementations direct. Mm-hmm. Technically, you can w- work with them for support if you have some larger implementations or other issues that you need to work with. But it's it's ma- mostly driven by uh, the partner network uh, that they have to do the implementation. And as the product has changed over the years, uh, you, you know, the implementation process has changed, and the relationships across com- uh, companies have changed as well. Uh, where a lot of partners now rely on each other for different aspects of it, because as technology advances, as the features and functionality get added to the software, it's difficult for one group or one person to know everything. So in order to have a successful implementation, sometimes it's also a matter of partnering up with the right individuals who can implement or assist with certain portions of an implementation to make for a more successful solution. Uh, Because a lot of times ERP implementations go beyond the ERP application because, right. you know, in 2024, you know, everybody's looking to integrate with external systems, you know, with the, uh, the availability of APIs and allow companies to communicate externally as far as transferring documents or transferring right. pieces of information. So um, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a great experience. Yeah, it's, uh, that's what I mean. It's, it's because usually it's so integrated with those other tools and systems. I mean, my experience was, uh, and developing a collaboration front end, and we were integrating into the ERP and and other systems for um, product development, and uh, and so you know you change the design of something, and it impacts a lot of products. Uh, and it was part of a demand planning uh, system that we were building. Uh, anyway, but it's it's I mean, my point is that it, like there uh, there were in those teams that I worked with. Um, there, there were it was it wasn't the Microsoft world. It's just just a very different space. And knowing that, I mean, where uh, you know Business Central kind of fits, um, I've not run into too many uh, MVPs. I think you might be the second or third Business Central focused MVP. Um, a couple months back, uh, Tanya Henderson, who uh, you yes. know, who, who I met last year, I'm in Utah. She's in Utah. She's less than an hour from me. 
I was like, I, it's like I had no idea that there was another MVP focused on this other area so close, but got to know a little bit more about what she's doing. Kind of similar story, um, had been yes. with technology for a long time. There are several of them. I do not know the exact number. I communicate with a lot of them regularly, you know, a good 10 to 15 or so on a regular basis. I believe there are a number more. Uh, I wish I knew the exact number. The designation for the MVP is not business central. And now I believe it's under the classification of AI ERP was the, hmm. the name on the award. Okay. So it's, um, well, they move uh, the yeah, buckets around and they also don't make it easy to, for us as MVPs or for people on the outside to go to the MVP site and just search. Unless all of you put business central in your description for your profile, there's nothing to search on. You, you, you can't just go in there and filter your view, but I will have to take a search on that later and see if I can see the the members that have the business central designation. If not, I think I'll share the tip that you had mentioned to put something in the bio uh, so, to allow for the searching. Right. It's a very simplistic searching out of the MVP site for folks that don't know. It's mvp.microsoft.com for those that are wondering. Well, so Brad, what was your journey to becoming an MVP? I mean, it's you've been in the space for a long time. What took you so long? <laughs> I often get asked that question, and I'm not certain what took so long. Uh, I am, you know, I do everything I do out of passion uh, for the product. It's been my life. It's been everything that I know, and it, I strongly believe in the application. I strongly believe in helping uh, customers implement uh, ERP applications to become successful and also increase some efficiencies. Uh, so I'm not certain what took so long, but uh, I'm happy to be here. I was shocked to wake up. Uh, you know, my note I found in the morning, I couldn't sleep one evening for whatever reason. And I decided instead of laying there in bed, uh, flopping to, to get up and I checked my email. It was the first email I saw, uh, which was uh, exciting. Uh, the journey of what got me here. I mean, some of the things that I do, as I had mentioned, uh, I work with uh, the implementation of ERP. I primarily focus on development and system architecture. Uh, I am also versed in functionality. Uh, some of the things that I do for, you know, the Business Central community to help, uh, you know, increase the visibility of Business Central and the successful implementations. I do a lot of blogging. Uh, I do a lot of presenting at different sessions, uh, excuse me, uh, at different conferences. Uh -huh. I also have a, I'm a co-host on a podcast that I started with my co-host, Chris. We started that back, I think, in 2022, uh, which we also talk about Business Central limitations and speak with several members of the uh, Microsoft Business Central community to let them also share information about themselves, as well as what uh, some other contributions or some great things that they've done with the product. Uh, so that kind of is in a nutshell. And I also, in occasion, as part of some of the conferences, have uh, some development training classes. So I also try to mentor other new members to, uh, I call it the Business Central community, the Business Central application, to help them go through and understand how to develop for the ERP applications. It's, um, you know, it has its own language, mm -hmm. uh, but it has some similarities to other languages, but also get an understanding of how to develop in that environment and develop uh, within the uh, business central application to have a better understanding of it so they can provide better solutions. So where, where does the- A little long-winded, I'm sorry. No, 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 no it's, it, it's fine. I was just thinking of like with the major events that are out there, I mean, you've got the Microsoft, what used to be I called the marquee events and it's much uh, uh, smaller now, the new model for Ignite and Inspire and, and even Build. They're more pushing of marketing information than really a conference where- you know, there's there are a lot of community speakers talking about you know Microsoft pushing like, hey, here's what's new. The the community generally is like, here's our experience deploying this new stuff, and here's the stories, the real world examples of that. It's much more on the marketing side, and that has impacted a number of communities. And, and so I'm familiar with like the formerly SharePoint, the M365, the SQL communities, the uh, Power Platform communities. What are the big events or are there any major events that where where this community gets together? Yes, for the business center application, uh, some of the conferences do overlap with they, they also have another ERP application outside of business central, but uh, they have conferences worldwide in the United States. You know, I attend often, which is Summit North America. There is uh, Dynamics Con Live is another popular one. 
they have a community summit. Uh, the Directions NA is one that's more geared towards partners, and that's held in April this year. It would be in San Diego, I believe. Yep. The Dynamics Con Live one is a mixture of customers and partners. That will be in Denver in April. And in October, the Dynamics Community Summit is in Texas. Uh, and I've presented at all of those, or I will present at Dynamics Con this year. I've presented at Summit before and also at the Community Summit one in October. Well, there also are international conferences. They have the directions of EMEA, directions Asia. They have them mm -hmm. you know, geographically dispersed around and they get, Microsoft does have a, a large presence at those. Uh, and then there's also uh, a lot of several European conferences. There's Dynamics Minds. The, if you look, there's several of them. Was it Summit? Was that that one that was, was it in the Carolinas? It was somewhere like in the Northeast? Like what it would happen? What, what, it, it, it moves. Oh, the, the locations move. move. Okay. This past year, it was in uh, Carolina, uh, North Carolina, uh, Charlotte. Okay. Uh, this yeah, this year. Yeah. Previous years, it's been in Orlando. I think it, it's it it moves from coast to coast. I think one year it's on the east coast, the next year it's on the west coast. I think with COVID, you know, changing the whole conference makeup, uh, they yeah. did have a couple back to back on the east coast. I believe, from my understanding, it was due to scheduling. Uh, and also, as far as the summit uh, conference is concerned, this year I'm on the uh, uh, board of advisors as well as on the planning committee. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's one of those events where I was looking through trying to find kind of channel partner centric events uh, across the Microsoft ecosystem. I was out looking on tech community at a bunch of events, and I saw that. I'm like, what is that one? It had a lot of a, a lot of exhibitors. It, it I don't know the size of the number of attendees of summit, but I'm like, what? What summit itself as a name is not very descriptive. And so I was trying to figure out like what was included within that conference. There, that is a large conference. There, yes, I yeah. think last year was about 6,000. It is not business central uh, centric. Uh, there are business central partners and customers. It is a conference where uh, there are exhibitors. Uh, power, you can have a power platform presence all within that you know, that stack, that Microsoft stack or an ERP, which includes Power Platform, you can right. have. It's uh, more of a dynamics customers. community. Yes, like thank side you. Of things. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. And it's a, you know, I believe last year was uh, somewhere around 6,000 attendees. Yeah, I, I, and that I, was I a combination of no, users and partners. I'm sorry. So it's, yeah, a, yeah. it's, it's more... If you, I think if you remember back, you know, back when Microsoft had these conferences, they had, I think it was Convergence or something where it was like the more customer focused one. Right. It, it's something like that. And in that um, conference, there's a lot of training. Uh, so there are a lot of community driven uh, sessions where if you attend, not only do you get to see the, some exhibitors and what products are available to assist with your implementation and get some new ideas of, you know, the newer technology or features uh, that are coming out, you can also go through some, you know, uh, training sessions of varying lengths. There's some that are full day training sessions. There are some that are an hour, some that are an hour and a half. Well, that's something that, I mean, Tech Ed did, uh, Ignite used to do. I'm not sure what the new model for Ignite the last two years whether they still had like the hands-on labs and, and all of that. Like my, my first experience, I joined Microsoft. I was there for three and a half years, joined in 2006, um, was the first SharePoint conference, uh, was working in the hands-on lab. And so I love that model where you can go to the marketing sessions, Microsoft talking, here's this new product, here's this new feature. You can go to the MVP and expert sessions uh, that, that are IT pro focused, that are show you how to do those things. Or you can go to, like, like you said, like a training workshop. You could actually, they'd have certification classes that were there, part of the program um, for those larger events. I mean, I just love that mixture of, uh, you know, for, for everybody and pull in, not just the IT pros and the people selling the software through partners, but uh, that are there that are practitioners and customers as well. It's a, it's a nice mix. I, I I believe in that as well. I like it. I when I attend conferences, uh, you know, I, as I mentioned, I present uh, material. I also go through a number of sessions. I do prefer the sessions where you have the hands on. Uh, some of the sessions, it's always so easy to watch somebody do something or go through it, but to be able to sit down and actually type and you know, if it's something on the computer that you need to use, but to go through the experience to get a, a feel for it and to have 
uh, individuals there that you can speak with uh, if you have questions, which is nice. Uh, another big aspect of it is getting to meet a number of people. I mean, these conferences, the networking is unbelievable. It's if you go to, to a conference, you know, I think a big part of it's not only what you get out of it during the day, as they say, but there's a lot of events that uh, drive for you know, communication amongst individuals. So you get to meet a lot of uh, like individuals that may be in a similar role to you uh, from a customer point of view, may be going through or have had a similar experience and you can get some understanding for them. And I see a lot of that interaction. And then also partners can talk to each other to see how they're going through with different, um, you know, implementations and such. Yeah. Well, I, so my, and I always highly recommend as well, like uh, to, to, dive into the community aspect of it because I mean, I, going back to when I, I left Microsoft in 2009, joined a, 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 a small uh, ISV in Seattle, went to the, what was the SharePoint conference in the fall of 2009 and made friends and connections at that event um, that I'm still talking to on a weekly, regular basis. In fact, someone just yesterday, um, I'll just say uh, Dan Usher um, was not at that conference, but people were carrying around his picture on little signs and taking selfies with it. So I, his birthday was yesterday and I did a mock-up of his face on a little sign. You know, that was from that conference in 2009. It's, it's something that has, I mean, selfishly going to those major conferences and, and it, it, participating actively within the community, not just going to the sessions and being a wallflower on my own, but going and meeting people, talking, making connections has helped my career has, you know, it, throughout and uh, built friendships that have carried through since then. So uh, highly recommend folks that get involved. I can second that. No, I can second that. And it's, it's, I'll take it from the other side. There have been times where I've met individuals online and through various, uh, you know, forums, whether it be X, LinkedIn, you know, other uh, Beaver Engage discussions, or, you know, you may see some repositories that they've worked on, but you get to start communicating with them. And then these conferences, you can take it and now you get to meet them in person. So it's advantageous both ways, because some people that you finally get to meet, there's been several cases where, you know, I was excited to meet someone in person that I've had conversed with for years. And also like you, I've met individuals at conferences that become part of my network as someone who's valuable that I talk with regularly. If I have uh, a question or I want to run a thought by them, mm -hmm. it, it's a great way to meet like uh, industry. Uh, I don't want to just say industry, but, but similar people in similar situations. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, th there's a, I, I, so that's why I always highly recommend it. It's like a sales marketing person. I mean, I go to an event, I have a strategy in place. I have a list of people, of customers that I know will be there that I want to go and meet. Like you should have that strategy going to any conference. I mean, certainly as an MVP, like I have, uh, I interview folks, like if we're at the same conference, like I was going to ask it whether uh, you're coming out to MVP Summit in, in March. That's another opportunity for MVPs to to do all of this. I am going to try to get that into the schedule. Unfortunately, uh, well, I don't even want to say unfortunately. This is my first year with the MVP and the announcement. I was not aware of you know the acceptance until you know late uh, yeah. January. Yeah. And with the conference being early March, it's a little difficult to try right. to arrange to get there with my schedule, but I'm going to try to do so. If I can't make it in person, I will definitely attend virtually. It's not always the same effect, but at right. least I'll have an understanding of what the con that particular conference is like from afar. Yeah. And then no, you know, hopefully next year be in the same position. Yeah, definitely. It says, well, you're, I, I believe as becoming an MVP in here in Q1, um, you're not. Uh, part of the renewal process at mid-year so you're automatically renewed so you'll be you'll be around for next oh actually i mean we're already in the the year it's january so it doesn't matter about well anyway i'm getting ahead of myself so you will be able to go whether you get renewed or not next year you'll be able to go because the the cycle is from you know from uh, uh you know end of june through uh, uh, you know, the fiscal year. So July 1st. Um, so anyway, 
highly recommend that you make that it's it is the i say this with a lot of the mvps i talk to that are that are new uh it's the the number one benefit i believe of being an mvp it's part of the reward of being an mvp uh is that summit because you make connections your peers with the microsoft uh, uh teams uh it, it's just it's a massive benefit to being within the MVP community. So it's, uh, yeah. And, and like that, likewise, if you go in with a list of here's the people I want to reach out to, here's the Microsoft people, here's the, the fellow community members that I want to connect with, uh, have a plan, have a strategy for that. And you'll get tremendous benefit. It's not even like the sessions and, uh, uh, like this is the, my problem with conferences. I can dial into a conference remotely. I can see what's being presented, but what you often miss in the importance of being in person at events uh, is the crosstalk, is the hallway conversations after that. Following up, like I never thought to ask that question. Um, you know, the, you, sometimes the Q and A is not captured in the broadcast. Uh, it happens; they shut the, the camera down. It's the conversation that happens up by the stage once the cameras are off and they're switching out. And new speakers are going up. Um, being able to see who's asking the question and go talk to them like, Hey, I'm having the same issue. We should connect, you know, and uh, uh, not that it's always an issue, Microsoft. I don't want to paint this as being negative, <laughs> the, the <laughs> excitement, the passion around uh, the new technology, but now nah, it's, it's a, it's a great benefit. So, but uh, yeah, I, I realize it's, it's, uh, uh, it's also been on short notice the last two years. So it's uh, difficult to, uh, to change what's like, I already know events I'm going to in the fall. Uh, so sometimes finding out two months before an event, it's like, it's not enough time to pull that together. It, it's also a matter of balancing which events to go to. There are so many great events, I think within just the technology space or the business space in general that we could spend, I think each week of a year at a conference it's a, it all comes down to what is, you know, which conference will you get the most value out of attending and value can be defined as you'd mentioned, if it's for networking, if it's for knowledge or if it's for something else, and then how do you position to get to go with them? Because as I had mentioned there, there are conferences around the world for a given uh, technology uh, or uh, group. And, you know, I'd love to go to them all, but logistically, financially and uh, time, wise it's difficult to get to them all so it's yeah. a matter of picking the, the ones that uh strategically give you the best value yep it's also about always about uh or it should be about you know where you're going to have the most impact where you all get the best you know the, the the greatest impact out of participating as well well brad for for folks that want to connect with you where where are you most social where can people find you online where they can find me online in a, uh, a number of places. One I had mentioned, uh, we started a podcast that's Dynamics Corner, dynamicscorner.com. It's uh, both audible and we started publishing them on YouTube. Uh, I am on X at Developer Life. It's D V L P R L I F E. And always on LinkedIn, uh, Brad Prendergast. Uh, you'll be able to find me there uh, as well. And uh, you had mentioned about the networking with Microsoft Summit, even just in this few short weeks my network has already grown significantly. And so that, and I haven't gone out and met, uh, you know, anybody in person, as they say, as part of this, it's just the, the benefit of having access to different, you know, discussion groups and, and forums and uh, individuals like yourself who, who recognize that there are uh, new MVPs in the, the community they reach out and talk with. So uh, I can only imagine what it's like heading to the summit uh, conference. Yeah, well, the hashtag MVP buzz is a powerful thing. So it definitely extends your reach. So, but Brad, really appreciate your time and great to meet you. All right. Thank you. Likewise. Wow.